mercy poured, let the gracious body broken be to me, O gracious Lord, of thy boundless love, thy token. Thou didst give thyself for me, now I give myself to Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts and the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Holy God, Holy and mighty, holy immortal one. The Lord be with you. Almighty Father, his dear son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The first lesson is a reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over fire 
with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be the sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Sixteen, verse 1 and verses 10 through 17. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, have, I, your Lord and Master, have just done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. A quick summary of the paragraph I've just read. Servant. The word servant is often viewed negatively rather than unconditionally. Luke twenty two twenty six state Whoever among you wants to be a leader, they must be like a servant. Unquote. Jesus left us with a very plain and simple example. In John thirteen eight Peter refused to have Jesus wash his feet. Jesus replied, Peter, if you don't allow me to wash your feet, then you will be no longer be my disciple. Unquote. We're not too great to help our fellow, our fellow men or neighbor. A simple call to, the, to one who we have not seen or heard for a while can be a life-saving call or an offer to help with a project. Therefore, the word servant should not be viewed negatively, but rather unconditional help and caring for one another. Thank you. The second lesson. A reading from 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. My last gift to you, my own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. The world has changed before our very eyes, and we are all shaking our heads in disbelief and admitting that the struggle is real. How do we respond to those who have suffered losses during this time when they express fear? No doubt we struggle with our responses. Jesus knew his disciples would be placed in that very position when the feelings of abandonment and isolation would rattle their nerves and test the very foundation he built with them. May I suggest to you that the scripture was written for such a time as this. Jesus gave his disciples the assurance that in his physical absence, he would leave them with his peace, which only he can give for it is babbling to the world. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. As Paul writes it in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Jesus knew his disciples in much the same way he knows us. After all, these were the ones who shuddered in fear when they had been tossed about on the seas during that turbulent storm. They quickly forgot that the Prince of Peace was right there with them. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Jesus commanded the disciples, Do not let your heart be troubled, and do not be afraid. Breaking news. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same one who calmed the seas is present to calm the storms we are facing. It is time for us to dig deep and let our faith be stronger than our fears. How comforting it is to know we can trust the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. At his birth, the heavenly host sang, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Luke 2, verse 14. Therefore, let us enhance his favor and share the good news. Colossians 1, 19, 20 reminds us, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Jesus has given us a weapon. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. This is my commandment that you love one another that you do This is my commandment that you love one another that you do
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For the reason he said, for this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So, if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also are to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I'm with you only a little longer. You'll look for me, and as I've said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also, that love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. By this, 
They will know that you are my disciples, that you love one another. This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. Jesus, Jesus, the chef, Jesus, the cook, Jesus that pulls everything together. We sit together today at the supper. We call it the last supper. And we think, ah, oh, we're one of the disciples around the table. Think about it. Who, which one is you? Oh, I can see myself. I can see myself. Oh, well, the first one that comes to mind for me is doubting Thomas. Thomas. Or maybe, maybe Philip. Yeah, perhaps Philip, because Philip was the one who was often with Andrew. Which disciple am I? Well, here we sit around the supper and we are ready, ready to eat. And I'm reflecting upon my friend, my friend Jesus. Oh, this is such a wonderful friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything, everything. I can take any and everything to my friend Jesus. Yes, we've walked together for three years. Three years. But three years is not a very long time. Have you been with friends for three years, maybe in middle school? Or what about high school or even in college? Three years is not a very long time, yet the disciples were with Christ three years. Oh, for three years, I, I wanna be with my friend and you find yourself studying together and you find yourself being together and laughing together and oh, what joy. What joy the disciples had with Jesus. They found themselves in places they never thought they'd be. There, we are with them while Jesus is healing, while Jesus is lifting, while Jesus is performing miracles, while Jesus is raising Lazarus from the dead, Oh, and stilling the storm. Here we are. Here we are with Jesus, the Christ, around a table. Oh, how exciting it is. They looked at Jesus and they said, he's my friend. But they just saw a simple man. They could not see truly what Jesus was talking about. They couldn't hear. They couldn't see. They couldn't understand. They looked at him and saw a simple man, a carpenter with healing in his hands. They saw him calm the sea and heal a dying man. They saw, but could they really understand? They could not, they could not, though they tried. They could not, they could not, they could not understand what Jesus was saying. They could not understand who he was. But when times got hard, when times were difficult, when, for instance, Peter was reaching out for Jesus in a storm on the sea, 
And Jesus said, come to me, come. As he says to you and to me, come to me. And Peter started to walk even across the water and then he started to doubt. Is that you? Walking, walking with Jesus in full faith and then suddenly doubting. Jesus reaches out. Jesus reaches out and lifts Peter up. And then you know, then you know for sure in times like these, you need a savior. When you're sinking, sinking deeper and deeper into the mire, deeper into the sea, deeper into the storm, in times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid, solid rock in times like these. In times of Corona virus. In quiet times, my street as I walk outside is quiet. And then I find people with the masks. And then I find that I too am wearing a mask. A mask, usually a mask is for fun times. Oh, when we think of a mask, what do you think of? Oh, that time, just before All Saints Day when everyone is wearing masks and it's fun and you get candy and what's that day? But today is not that day. Today is a day when we reflect on what God is doing. And we say, as we said on Sunday, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. But as we said on Sunday, Hosanna means God save us, please save us. Oh God, make speed to save us. Oh Lord, make haste to help us as we say every evening in evening prayer. And I invite you now, as I invited you on Sunday, Salah, sit, relax, wait patiently. Listen and watch for what God is doing. Oh, it's hard in times like these to watch and see what God is doing. What is God doing in your life? What's God doing in your home? These are times that are different. Oh, for the children, there's no school. Hey. No school, but the internet. Oh, if not for the internet, you would be free. But no, there's homework, there's schoolwork, there's every day, and yet your schedule's just a little off. And what about the parents? Oh, our schedules are really off. Not only caring for one another, but caring for the family and doing work at home at the same time. Oh, we need a savior. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Hosanna, save us, Lord, save us. Today, we sit with Christ around the table, disciples, thinking and reflecting and not knowing what is to come. And Jesus says, this is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. But what is that love? We say, instead of love, replace the word love every time you think of it with merciful kindness. Acts of merciful kindness. That is the essence of God. Lift one another up. Oh, it's not easy when you're in close quarters to lift one another up. 
Somebody's getting on your last nerve. And yet, we can find a time when we are servants. My goddaughter said to her sister at age five, she said, you're not the boss of me. Oh, not the boss. When her sister said, pick up your toys off the floor. You're not the boss of me. Well, then her sister picked them up for her and said, I'll help you. I'll help you. Perhaps as servants, servant ministers to one another, we can find ways to leave little gifts wherever we have been. Just for family members, a little note that says, I'll help you. I'll help you along the way. And what about bringing peace? Ah, oh, the frustrations the, 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 in, the, in the communication. Oh, it's so difficult. Such times as these. But patience, love, peace, joy. We are the channels of peace. Him says, make me a channel of your peace. Make me, O oh Lord, a channel of your peace. And Christ says, love one another. You are the channel of peace. You are the one who lifts, who lifts up the situation. You are the body of Christ. That body broken at the table in bread. You are the blood, the blood that purifies you. And so as you take the bread spiritually in your inner self, you know that you are transformed by Christ to be Christ himself. You know as Christ looks at you across the table and says, do this in remembrance of me. Be a servant. The greatest among you must be like the least and servant of all. And bring peace. Let there be peace and you be that peace. You are the light of the world. A city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. Your life is not to be hidden, but shine, but to shine. And even as you walk with Christ this night, even as Christ himself fulfills God's plan of salvation for you and for me, this is the plan. We walk with Christ. We sing, I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me all along my pilgrim journey. Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. Oh, yes. Were you there? You'll walk with Christ. You're saying walk with me, Jesus, but will you walk with Jesus? Come, come to the garden of Gethsemane. Come, come and wake up. Don't sleep. And Christ says, won't you watch with me? One hour, pray with me, my friend, won't you stay with me, for soon my human time will end. He says, the one is coming, the one who had told him, even at the time of temptation, that he's gone, but he's coming back for an opportune moment. And he's coming back, the tempter, 
for an opportune moment for you and for me. Watch. Don't fall asleep. Watch with Christ and let Christ watch and walk with you. I want Jesus to walk with me. Walk with me into the garden, Lord. Be with me as I strive to be in my life with you. In these times when we are sheltering in place, let that place be your place. Oh, Lord, let my body be yours. Oh, Lord, take me and bless me and break me and use me, oh, Lord, my God, that I might be your servant. Won't you let me be your servant? I will be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant. Let us be on our way. The tempter is at hand. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Let us pray to the Lord who is our refuge and stronghold for all who are affected by coronavirus through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, hear us. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, that they may make wise decisions. Lord, hear us. For doctors, nurses, and medical researchers, that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, hear us. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. For the isolated and housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. Lord, hear us. For our homes and families, our schools and young people, all in any kind of need or distress. Lord, hear us. For those who are celebrating anniversary of birth this week, and for those celebrating their wedding anniversary. Lord, hear us. For a blessing on our local community, that our neighborhoods may be places of trust and friendship where all are known and cared for. Lord, hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God, merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone, 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your way. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. I give you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift 
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. When we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice to the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these 
gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your son, the holy food and drink of you, and unending life in him. Sanctify us also. We may receive this holy sacrament and serve him in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All of this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. These are the gifts of God, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We give you thanks, almighty God, that as believers who cannot physically receive this holy sacrament at this time, that we are assured that we are partakers by faith of the body and blood of Christ. And as soon as possible, we will join the people of our community, community in this holy sacrament. Come spiritually into our hearts, Lord, we pray. Unite us to you, Lord Jesus, who with the Father 
and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. It is our prayer that soon again, we the people of God will come together to commune the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ as he commanded us to make. And yet, at this time, we consecrate this bread that those who are ill might know that this bread is for you, that Christ is sacrificed for you, that those who are suffering from coronavirus and all those who are Christians far and wide might know Christ is with you. You are the body of Christ. And although you cannot now come together, Christ is with you. And as soon as we can, we will be united once again, that in the community of the faith we might have the work of the people, the praise of the people, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in fully physical proximity to one another once again. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is traditional that we watch with Christ on this night of Gethsemane, the night when Christ said, won't you watch with me one hour? Won't you pray with me, my friend? Won't you stay with me one hour? For soon, my human time will end. And so we, the people of God, go into Gethsemane Garden with Christ. But first, first, all things on the altar are clear. While we pray, Psalm 22. I'm reading from the book of Matthew. Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch for me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is 
not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it. May your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes the betrayer. We have stripped the altar. Christ goes to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray to be with the Father. And he takes with him Peter, James, and John. And he says, won't you watch with me one hour? Pray with me, my friend. Won't you stay with me? For soon my human time will end. Watch, watch one hour. Tonight, from nine to ten, the youth and a few adults will be watching one hour. And then from 10 to 11, another team will watch and wait. And then from 11 to midnight, watching and waiting. And we will watch and wait till tomorrow noon when we reconvene to walk the way of the cross. Won't you watch with me? One hour pray with me. My friend, won't you stay with me? For soon my human time will end. You will suffer hurt for three days. Life will bring you grief and pain. I have conquered death, and I will raise you up again. I will raise you up again. Won't you watch with me? One hour, pray with me, my friend, won't you stay with me, for soon my human time will end.